back in Generation 1. Shiny Pokemon didn't exist. But in Generation 2, they made Shiny Pokemon. See, sometimes it was difficult to tell, though. It's a terrible, terrible screen. But seeing that Gen 1 Pokemon were still present in Generation 2, because Dexit wasn't a thing yet, they had to give them shiny colors, too. Shiny Pokemon were a welcome addition to Pokemon. Every time you encounter a Pokemon, there's a very, 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 very minuscule chance that it'll be a different color. And after catching it, well, you'll have something to show off to your friends. Hey, hey guys, check out my puke green Espeon. Oh, dude, that's disgusting. I know, right? Awesome. Uh, super long story short, some older Pokemon shiny colors were awful because the differences in color were chosen by an algorithm rather than designed or chosen. Which is also why some old shinies change almost nothing, and others are super drastic. You see, the game's code would change the color palette of the Pokemon to the next suitable one, and this is how shinies were made all the way up until Generation 6, when the main series moved to 3D models, which don't work the same way as sprites. So from then on, all of the shiny colorations were chosen by hand, they were designed. Thus, from Gen 6 onwards, a lot of shiny Pokemon have meaning behind their colors. It's awesome! Meaning, of course, the shiny Pokemon we're talking about today have absolutely no rhyme or reason to being the colors that they are, but gosh dang it, this is an internet theory channel, so lord knows I'm gonna BS as much as possible. Just know that any Pokemon today with a seemingly good reason for being the shiny color that it is, is entirely coincidental, or I'm just really really stretching the limits of theorization. This whole video is just complete BS, but this is my life now. <coughs> Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur just turn green, and the leaves are a bit darker. I mean, it's just a plant. What does it even do? Flower is a different color too, because flowers can do that. Charmander and Charmeleon get, like, bleached or something? They lighten up to become yellow. Notably, there are salamanders of many, many colors. At least the coloring here sticks with the fiery theme. But then Charizard is an oddball. I feel like the algorithm may have been tweaked here on purpose to get Charizard to be a cool, edgy color. After all, Charizard is one of the most popular Pokémon, so it is definitely deserving of it. Plus, as more evidence of actual tampering, its shiny coloration actually changed. Originally, it was Nidoking colors, but now it's black and red. Edgy colors for an, at the time, edgy Pokémon. Charizard was also the shiny shown off in the original artwork made to show off shiny Pokémon. So I'm pretty sure this one was designed as opposed to just letting an algorithm do whatever it wants. But anyway, black and red, it's burnt out. It's charred thus black. Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise get purple skin and green shells. The green shell is easy, it's a green shell, a common color for turtles. Purple skin, then, is, I mean, it's a complementary color, green and purple. Caterpie is yellow, Metapod is orange, and Butterfree is this monstrosity of a color combination. <laughs> Gross! This line is mainly based on the Asian Swallowtail, I mean, look at its caterpillar stage, obviously. And the Spice Bush Swallowtail, a close relative, turn yellow just before they begin metamorphosis. Yeah, that seems way too convenient for an algorithm, but I guess. As for the orange metapod, well, while not the same species, there are plenty of red-orange chrysalises, like this one from the Darigda Pronchitis... I can't pronounce names. Dargida Prochinctus. Just take that and brighten it up for a cartoon and there you go. Then, this disgusting Butterfree, I'm just going to have to chalk up to the fact that butterflies come in many colors. There are butterflies with green eyes and butterflies with pink wings, and from what I could find, never at the same time though, so... Weedle is yellow, again, plenty of yellow worms. Then Kakuna is green, just referencing the same chrysalis pupas that Metapod normally does. And then Beedrill is green too. Thankfully, the Emerald Wasp is a thing. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, Spiro, and Fearo all get this kind of gross greenish-yellow hue. I mean, yellow and green birds exist, but they are typically tropical birds or hummingbirds. But since Pidgeot is the most yellow, and it's the most bird of prey-like, uh, let's say it resembles a golden eagle. Ha! Ah, Fearo itself is a mix of a bunch of different birds, but each of them do have a mildly yellow-green variant, like the Cormorant and Heron. Sort of. 
Rattata is a graying yellow, and Raticate is extremely orange. Then their Alolan variants are both dark red. While yellow rats aren't a thing, there is the yellow rat snake. So just remove the snake, and there you go! There's also the Silver Fawn, a variety of domesticated rat that is yellowish, but not as dark as this Rattata. Then Raticate. Here's the Red Crested Tree Rat. Orange, and vaguely spiky fur and all. As for the Alolan variants, they are designed to look like little Japanese thieves wearing their equivalent of a ski mask, and I guess clothes can be any color. Dark red is also a dark mean looking color. I mean, Carmen San Diego, Red Thief, eh, eh. Ekans also gets this gross greenish pea color. As you've seen and will continue to see, a load of Gen 1 Pokemon got this as their shiny color because of the algorithm! This was a favorite color palette for it. For some reason. Anyway, there are plenty of snakes in this color. Same with Arbok. Common Cobra color. Pikachu and Raichu just get to be a darker orange color. I mean, could you imagine if the algorithm decided to turn Pikachu, like, blue or something? <laughs> the Pika Blue Conspiracy. These Pokemon are already extremely cartoony things, not really reflecting any real life thing, but there are those previously mentioned rats, though. Alolan Raichu, though, was designed to be this color. It's like it got a really nice tan from surfing all the time. Or, since, fun fact, its feet resemble little dollops of cream and it's got this toasty color, it's all because it's designed to look like a malasada. So the shiny coloration could be a chocolate malasada. Sand Shrew gets all minty. And here's a green shrew. Sand Slash gets dark brown and blood red spikes. It's edgy, and it's stained this color from ruthlessly rolling into its enemies. And then the Alolan variety are just a blue or blue. It's colder ice, I guess. The entirety of the Nidoran line just turn into the colors of the opposite sex besides Nidoqueen. For some reason, she turns green. No real idea on this one. Same with the Clefairy line. The tips of their ears turn green. I guess green is a common color of aliens, and these are alien Pokemon after all. Vulpix also gets grossly yellow with a tad bit of green. Ignoring the green, there are foxes that are yellowish. Ninetales, though, becomes this dark silver, and silver foxes are a thing. They look really cool, vaguely spooky. And Alolan Ninetales also gets spookier for a shiny color, and when you look into its Pokedex entries, you realize it really is a fairly spooky Pokemon. And then, shiny Alolan Vulpix just has purple eyes. Meh. The Jigglypuff line just get green eyes. Different colored eyes are pretty common. Green bats! Haha. <laughs> Well, bats, darkness, night vision goggles show things in green. There you go. The Oddish line also has this gross green hue, but they are plants, so it's fine. Paris is a cicada nymph, and some cicadas are red, though most of them are yellow, though. Oh, so, so is shiny Parasect. Cool. Venonat, blue eyes, eye colors can change. Venomoth, though, is all blue. There are plenty of baby blue moths, like the Blackberry Looper Moth, or the Badwing. Diglett and Dugtrio get blue noses, the poor things! They must be so cold! Oh! Frostbite and Raiden's disease can cause blue appendages, most commonly fingers and the nose. And funnily enough, the original sprite has the dirt turn blue too, because again, it's all of the algorithm. But in later games, they stopped the dirt from changing color, because that doesn't make sense. And that also proves that there is some tampering that they do with it, but for the most part, it's an algorithm choosing everything. And as for the Alolan variants, they keep the blue nose thing, and their hair stays the same color too. But the skin turns to this dark red. Well, the hair references Pele's hair, which is formed by volcanoes, so maybe this color is inspired by magma. Or just red clay soil. Meowth gets darker, and Persian gets lighter. Hmm. Well, cats come in many colors, including blue! Ish. Russian blues and British shorthairs are some of my favorite cats. And then the Alolan shinies are just more saturated blue. Psyduck turns baby blue and Golduck gets darker and finds the lipstick. Notably, blue ducks do exist in New Zealand, and they even have some dark pinkish feathers in front. So just up the saturation because it's a cartoon. There you go. Though, Golduck is also partially inspired by a yokai called a kappa, which are normally green. But there are plenty of depictions of them being blue, too, like in Yokai Watch. 
And they also eat children limb from limb, which may be why Goldak's beak is stained this way. And then Mankey just looks like a mint chip ice cream. For no good reason. And Primeape just gets darker and dirtier. Growlithe and Arcanine become a golden yellow color. They are partially inspired by Foo Dogs, those Asian lion dog statues. And those statues are most commonly made of stone, but palaces would have their statues dipped in gold. The Poliwag line. Blue, blue, green. Hmm. Okay. What's your deal, Polyrath? Slightly different colors for shinies are kind of lame, eh, but they could just be chalked up to some messed up genetics. But the green here, I guess could be a reference to actual frogs. Or its alternate evolution, Politoed. Abra and Kadabra also barely change. But Alakazam gets pink, whatever these are. Uh, some monks wear pink. You know, the ones that can supposedly meditate so hard they can hover. And in-game, pink is the color of the psychic type. Also, its regular fur becomes more yellow, maybe referencing gold, which is a metal commonly associated with psychic powers. Machop gets a more human-y flesh tone, but Machoke turns green, and Machamp turns more green. Ah. Uh, well, bruises can sometimes be greenish. Maybe while training it gets punched everywhere. Bell Sprout in Weepin' Bell's leaves turn yellow, which is actually more accurate of a color for pitcher plants. I don't really get Victory Bell though, it's like a pitcher plant that's dying, dead leaves, and its circulation is bad, thus the blue lips. Even its main body is turning brown. Tentacool and Tentacruel go purple green with lighter tan tentacles. Jellyfish come in many colors, as do squid, these colors included, though never really all at once. Oh man, Geodude becomes a lump of gold ore, and Graveler is all muddy, and Golem is now the sandstone variety. The Alolan variants of the latter two also fit the same explanation, but Alolan Geodude is just orange now. I guess it's made of calcite or bauxite now. Ponyta and Rapidash's flames turn blue and... dark bluish purple? Blue flames are fairly common. Typically it means the fire is hotter or there's a more complete burn. The dark smoky color here may be ghostly looking on purpose. It's like a ghost horse, which there are many tales of in folklore. Slowpoke spend too long in the sun and get sun bleached. Slowbro, though? Uh. Well, shells are sometimes brown, and the purple is technically a closer color to actual hippos than pink is. I guess. I actually really like the shiny colors of Magnemite and Magneton. Besides the classic media depiction of magnets, the more common color for them is just straight up solid black. Then, instead of a stainless steel colored ball, it's light brass. Farfetch'd turns pink. And here's the pink headed duck. Doduo and Dodrio, though, just get lime green again. I don't know, are they supposed to be fruit on a stick? Are they durians now? Seal and Dugong get a sepia filter put on them. I guess they reference Sea Life documentaries filmed in the 70s, of which there were many famous ones. Grimer and Muck become a much more accurate coloration to real, actual sewage and pollution. None of this fake purple stuff. And the shinies of the original ones more closely resemble the color of the Alolan ones without the multicolor thing. Neat! Gelder turns orange like a lion's claw scallop. And Cloyster is much bluer, perhaps like blue Maxima clams. Ghastly is much more saturated now, and there's not much to say about the colors of a fictional cartoon ghost. Hunter's tongue is blue, for the referencing corpses, I guess, and then Gengar gets less saturation, which I guess makes it spookier. This onyx looks like it lived near Yellow Rock Trail, and Drowsy and Hypno are pink. Seeing as the tapir that they're based on is sort of like a pig, I assume that that's the logic that the algorithm used here if it used any. Krabby is yellow, chuck out the golden ghost crab, and Kingler is this murky green, like the European green crab. Voltorb and Electrode now look like great balls. Execute, which are actually seeds, now look more like seeds. And Executor sort of resembles a red feather palm tree or a dying palm tree. And the Alolan variant is just the same. Cubone and Marowak also turn green. I guess they look more reptilian now. And the Alolan shiny Marowak just ups the saturation. It's not much to go off of here. Hitmonlee and Chan are green now. Maybe to look more like their idol, shiny Machamp. Also, boxing gloves can be any color, blue included. Lickitung turns yellow, like a yellow iguana. 
coughing and wheezing turn gray like a chemical bomb, and they leak purple gas now, a more classical pollution color, at least in the 90s. Rhydon and Rhyhorn are just different kinds of rock, like sandstone or rich clay. This Chansey is from New York Times bestseller Sam I Am by Dr. Seuss. Come to think of it, Tangela's vines being blue doesn't make much sense. Vines are usually green in real life, so this is just more accurate. Kangaskhan just got tan. It just got a tan. It's darker. Horsey looks more marine with its greenish hue, and Seedra looks much more aggressive and draconic. Seahorses and sea dragons come in many, many colors, including blue and red, but often not both at the same time. Goldeen and Sea King are just disappointing. Just a greenish hue again. They are covered in algae, I guess, which is gross. They could have been so much cooler though. They're koi! You can do so many cool things with koi! Ah, starfish naturally get bleached all the time, so that would explain Staryu. But Starmie though turns blue. Like the night sky, cause it's a star. Or like many species of starfish that are blue. Mr. Mime is green for no good reason. I mean, he's a mime. Mimes wear makeup. Makeup can be any color. Scyther gets more saturated, but its joints become red. Which I guess is actually more accurate to a real praying mantis, but with the saturation turned way up. Jinx swaps to a pink outfit to appear more feminine. Electabuzz turns orange. High voltage signs are most commonly yellow, but orange ones do exist. Magmar swaps yellow for pink just to prove that it can, in fact, be uglier. Pinsir is a stag beetle, and its shiny coloration is actually more accurate to real stag beetles than its normal color. Tauros also becomes a disgusting yellow green. What the heck? Well, here's a yellow cow bull thing. You're welcome. To explain the green, it's moldy. All right. Magikarp shiny makes it out to be more colored like the common carp, which is funny because it's a shiny. It's supposed to be the rare one. But now we get to what is perhaps the most famous shiny Pokemon. Red Gyarados. You know, sea monsters? They don't really exist. So when designing them, you can do whatever you want. And I feel like, I feel like just like with Charizard, this was such an important Pokemon because the story of Gold and Silver had a shiny Gyarados in the Lake of Rage and all that. I feel like this one was designed too. And that's why it's super, super red. It's like a Chinese dragon. Lapras turns purple, and, uh... Uh... It's a Placidont mixed with a Plesiosaur, which we don't actually know of the color they are, but most experts point to brown or greenish. But like in many, many dinosaur depictions and cartoons and such, the artists sometimes get crazy. So a wacky color like this is possible. It's a shiny Lapras. Ditto is just a mass of cells that can transform into any shape or color, so why is it even pink by default, huh? Well, you can say the same for the shiny. Eevee could be a reference to albinism just without the red eyes. Vaporeon turns purple because it's related to Lapras. Jolteon turns green because it was already yellow and Game Freak hates us. And Flareon somehow manages to become even less interesting. Then Porygon is Data. Data can be any color. And Armanite and Amistar are also blue normally, but they turn purple as they are also the long lost ancestors of Lapras and Vaporeon. But all right, all right, jokes aside, quick break. You see what's happening here? Armanite and Star, Lapras and Vaporeon, and heck, even some of the bits on Porygon, they were all light blue and they all turned purple for their shiny because it's an algorithm. It sees the light blue and chooses the next appropriate color, which happens to be purple. Anyway, that's why there's so many gross green ones, because they all are also the same colors by default before that, and so they just they all turn green and gross. Green and gross. Anyway, back to the Pokedex. Kabuto and Kabutops turn varying shades of yellow-green. <laughs> you see? Most of these gross yellow-green ones were all brown originally. Remember, there's, there's really no reason for any of these to be the colors that they are. This video... I'm so sorry. This video is entirely BS. Just remember that. It's all, it's all fun. We're having fun. I'm stupid, and we're having fun. But, Shiny Kabutops may be green because it's an ancient ancestor to Scyther, which is green. Hmm? Aerodactyl becomes Crobat colors because it's an ancient ancestor to the Crobat line. And Snorlax just gets more saturated. 
Articuno gets more snowy, Zapdos gets just a tad darker, and more fried, I guess, and Moltres gets more... fiery. Dratini and Dragonair swap from Baby Boy Blue to Baby Girl Pink, but Dragon Knight becomes Dark Green. Notably, being a dragon that has a lot to do with the ocean makes this shiny color match up pretty well with a lot of ocean dragons from Japanese folklore. How neat. U2 turns green because it's an alien-looking genetic experiment, and Shiny Mew is blue to match Shiny Ditto, because it also matches regular Ditto normally, because Dittos are all failed Mew clones. There's a whole big theory about that. It's a classic. I covered it years ago, I think. If I did, it'll be linked here. If not, then, well, there are hundreds of other videos on it. So. Those were the Gen 1 Pokemon shiny colorations explained. To reiterate again, most if not all of these colors were made by an algorithm, so colors with really good explanations are most likely coincidences. Do you have any BS ideas for why the shinies are the colors that they are that are better than mine? Let me know down below and never stop using your noggin or going to noggin.net where you can buy all sorts of noggin merchandise, shirts, iron-on patches, stickers, cool stuff it all supports the channel and it's great supplies are limited links below and until next time you never stop using your noggin